Hey, this is Bob Hartley. I uh, led a ministry called Deeper Waters, and it uh, got big. The big is not always better, but it was very, I spoke to national leaders and world leaders about who God is and his ways and their nations, and I wouldn't say I'm prophesying. I'd say, would you consider? But also in the church, I prophesied. And I was running hard, and my body gave out, and now I am taking a three-year vacation, and I'm starting to get more energy, but I am not pushing it. And I, Doreen, but I am laying out for you an understanding of where we're at, and I. this is what I've been known for, is to not prophesy in just a way that's a gushing gas, but as a builder, and I, I love the gushing gas. I love the dreams people are having, kind of. It's too important for us not to follow the biblical precedence of how directional prophecy comes and how it can stir up the children and stir up others. And there's just more understanding when you are a mother or father, you proclaim to your children you know, you don't come in and say, Dad's lost his job and this and that. You you learn how to measure and communicate what's appropriate so that we don't lead the people into Isaiah 40, uh, 50, verse 4. It says, weary. We can become weary, wounded. And when our prophets are in a weary, wounded place, our leaders are they're in a place of uh, negation where they see negative versus appreciative. You can smell a difference. It does not produce life and life abundantly. So the mission of Deeper Waters, Voices of Hope, is one, a voice of hope, a hope reformation. The Lord has spoken this on many levels. Go back and look at all the history on the web page through a thousand other groups that have taken on this reality. And it's about not only how we're saved, but that was a reformation by grace versus works, changed our world, opened up the age of enlightenment because of the religious bondage. We have that bondage where it's now about life. We're convinced in how we're saved, but not how we should live. We think it's misery and then it's apocalyptic devastation. And then we got a great place in heaven, but it doesn't cause us to identify with the kingdom of God and with the earth, people on the earth. And Jesus preached the kingdom of God now. And so this second reformation is how do we live? We live in hope, confident expectation in the goodness of God. I have a hope DVD series that after years of spending in the prayer room, hours studying the end time scenarios, studying the temporal promises, studying the word hope, because God corrected me and through Bob Jones, and I was to bear, undig treasure that had been locked up for 6,000 years, and it was the face of God and hope from Isaiah 45. Since so you're going to break and shatter the iron and the gates and get the lock open and dig up hope, 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 hope in God. And it has been a stunning understanding. It's profound. It's so clear now that it's the two spies versus the ten spies that what has been in vogue is doubt addicts, negation negativity that negates our promises. It is not a matter of just, okay, this is what God said. You're going to be having tough times and then you're going to die and you got to hope in a resurrection. No, he is calling us to hope in the day and the life or why live on the planet. It was to not just pluck a few out. So, we are in a place where, number one, our mission is to redefine the nature and expression of Christianity. And it agrees with what Mike heard, but has a major different application. The nature of Christianity is, who is God? Why are you 
so against what we have portrayed as a person of Jesus? Are they all more evil than we were at their age? No, there is an opening up of the they don't want a misery life. They don't mind suffering, but just kill me. Versus just, sorrow is to be sorrow with hope, not this sadness, not this misery, not this living in fear and terror. The Lord came and he spoke out loud, not the spirit of terror years, but the years of crazy hope. It takes more courage to believe that and to fight through those demons. So one, we are about Voices of hope rising up and saying, we're not going to re-eat the manure anymore, the poison and the bread. We're not going to be the Isaiah 10. It says, woe to those who speak oppression. The Deuteronomy 32, if you say the nations are greater than I, then how can I dispossess them? And then he talks about occupying a land. You know, all the prophets has had those times where they were not happy. He said, Jeremiah, Ephraim, i got to speak against you, on and on. And then it comes to a crescendo in Jeremiah 32 where he says, okay, we're going to go into captivity for a while, but I'm going to buy this land in Anathal. He talked about hope because it's going to come out. And then in, once again, 70 years, it can be fertile fields. It can be redeemed land. There'll be healing in the land. Jeremiah 33, 6, there'll be hope in the land. It says... And an abundance of hearing, there'll be prophetic hearing that'll be clear, there'll be the heart, there'll be music from heaven, and there'll be the heart of shepherds, it will be a redeemed society, and the wilderness will bloom, how do we miss these things, Isaiah 36 says, okay, you're going to get the king of Assyria is coming against you, it is coming against all the other cities and nations. The virus has come. This is that. And it's all come. And then Hezekiah does what we're called to do. We build on our knees and gets on his knees and said, here's the promises, God. And we did make some mistakes. And Isaiah is answering him through the Lord, even while he's praying. And he said, I raised up the Assyrians to get rid of some of these other cities that weren't doing what I wanted them to do. But I put a hook in his mouth. He's gone. He's going to get killed by his own sons. And I'm going to send an angel and kill 185,000. How do we miss this? And he is in this last day going to bring sheep cities and nations. This is the year he's bringing original designs. So the second part, Hope Reformation, is adoring him and his original design, and then him showing us through his eyes what original design looks like on the earth, and us flipping, switching from seeing everything through eyes of critique. That's what we've been taught is critical analysis versus appreciative learning, which is God's way. Be thankful for all things. Your perspective will change where you'll see this earth, according to his original design, you'll name your city according to what he's named it. Has he ever been disappointed in our cities like Nineveh? Does he not love them? Does he not care about the people that are in there? Or do we continue to curse them? He, he calls the United States a good Samaritan nation. He calls Australia, affection in Australia, I could go on. Faithful France, I know that sounds crazy, but you declare what he declared, that he created them. No nation can name themselves. No fallen media can name themselves. Why do we feed ourselves on this crap? God is saying enough is enough. Discipline yourselves as a soldier in 2 Timothy 2 and be a prisoner of hope. If you're not hearing through hope or asking questions of hope, then you're getting garbage in. And it's going to bring dank emotions that is going to weigh you down. So there is another training in adoring him. You magnify him and the dot of evil becomes a little dot. I say 20 hours of adoring him to one hour of prophecy. And when I prophesy, I'm out of an overflow of how great he is. There's a solution in it. 
second hope hearing. There is a new kind of prophetic. The old prophetic is the old prophetic. It is not based on the love of God. It is not based on his character, the four distinctives, way he shows himself in the scripture throughout all history. I would ask you to study that. He does not, he shows himself as first the hopeful provider. Then he shows himself as the kind God and the redemptive God. Then he shows himself as a practical supplier. And then you get down to number six. He shows you as the one who corrects, and that's right. But it's awesome to see what he spoke out of words of life that were redemptive. We don't curse our children. We don't child abuse them. Destruction is not his way. We agree for all the people on the planet, and we steward them in love, and we're not afraid to love our enemies. So that is a hope hearing, and you're going to hear mysteries and wonders, things that you could never perceive, because he will break through on a different wavelength. It's Bob Jones saying to me, who I had years with, you're on Channel 6, the Garbage Channel, man's confusion versus channel five god's grace and i started to talk to bob about the last years of his life about his his prophetic he said i hear according to hope challenges but let tell me about hope solutions tell me about your adoration like tell me about the last five six years of his life and he told me I was 100%, and the whole glory train is going across the earth. I'm saying there is a progressive revelation of a healing, expanded view of him, of life, and of our influence, and we're going to get to represent him, represent him in a second Jesus movement with wisdom that will be much broader than how he's been perceived. Open our hearts so we, as a deeper water's voice of hope, emphasize and have golden tools in development in how to build a hope reformation according to his prophetic blueprint, how to hope hear, prophesy according to his prophetic blueprint, how to adore and then confess who he is and Listen to him at the table of the Lord and then speak in the earth what he's saying and create according to hope prayer. We have these tools developed over 25, 26 years. And so I encourage you on our web page, we're just because I haven't I've been battling health, it, it needs to be updated. And so we ask for your help. We we have a message that's going out for the next hundred days. This is stop it and look again and see Psalm 67. So we will be re releasing these corporate words and we ask you to spread them across the earth. So we have this good news full of humor and celebration. You can be like my grandmother who we took to the Grand Canyon and said it's nothing but a hole in the ground. And then I said to her, man, this is what I see. I see a redeemed city, radiant places. It, it was a unique unfolding but my dad had been like that to her where he, he, she'd say you lost eight jobs one summer he was an inner city principal and say no nine i lost that other one but he had indomitable hope when will the indomitable hopers rise up i have hope dvds that are stupendous in the word of God. What is hope? Why is hope? Who is God as the God of hope? How do you hope in nation, cities, people? Feed yourself on these things. So go on those web pages and get those. We have this journey called the journey of the yellow house. And it was when I was in a difficult time, but he was graduating me. Bob Jones said, you know, to go out, how to go in between uh, before a thousand, ten thousand, but not through a nation, before a nation. Well, I went before 13, 14 nations, and I'd meet with them almost yearly about their blueprints, and one of them really came against me, and I was okay, but when I came back home, people believed what they said about me that I loved, and they were friends, and then it just really hurt, and I was taken out for a while well 
God is bringing forth, listen to the last word about the hundred year word, those that will fight for each other and stand and sing the song in each other's heart and won't believe the first negative thing. We aren't like the American news. Like Mike Bickle said to me when he heard a few things, I will never, I know you for so long, Hartley, and who you are, you're the real deal. I will never believe anybody unless I hear it from your mouth. So this is a time for the hope centers to come forth. You are a living one. Let us help equip you. So we have this hope journey and we have tools, golden tools for each room. And we're doing it right now. We're in the hope hearing room. So please come and on Tuesday and Fridays be part of the journey. Check out our wave page as we begin to develop it more. We need hope volunteers. We need people that will help edit content, help run web page, help us with resources. It takes resources to get things done. And so I just want to just finish with that overall vision, that understanding that we're sowing the message of hope and hope reformation, that it's building a different mindset across churches and there was a thousand churches in the first year that renamed themselves hope and have built the five pillars of hope this year there's going to be many more and so we've got them in them tools to help build you'd be surprised what those churches are and businesses we're marketplace people as well and politically we've given it to political leaders so help us I am a catalyst. We need others to come in and manage and develop. And so we need hope ambassadors that come alongside, get trained in this Institute of Higher Learning, hope, and that get the tools, and then we'll have classes, learn how to hope, pray with us. We have had a lot of prayer across the nations, but it has been tilted. It's not filled with hope. So we're teaching Hope Prayer on the release of prayer almost every morning. That'll be by the scripture. You can pray about your own life, about your nation, and then you can keep a testimony with our Hope Spiral notebooks of how God answered you in hope. So that'll go on YouTube. If you know how to do YouTube and just do distribution, that would be helpful too. So... What have I said? I said three parts to our vision. We have values. We have four values we run by. And then we have vehicles. And I'm telling you what the, some of those vehicles are. Developing hope centers. Developing our hope adoration prayer. We're hoping 50 million will hope, pray, and flood this earth like the little Betsy Sue's. With not the doom prayer and gloom prayer, but the hope prayer that releases people into their greater callings, the greatest part of themselves and their nations. And we are also releasing hope hearing so that there'll be those that I was allowed into the nations because they said, this guy's going to bring us a little hope. And so that's, and it wasn't pie in the sky. It's God's word. So you can help us and come along. And I want to break this up into parts so we can repeat this. First, become a hope ambassador. And a hope ambassador is one that invites people into the hope journey right now, takes, repost what we share, and I'm not the only voice of hope, diversifies it and sends to all these places that are getting sucked into the misery, hope, and the feeding of hope that's building blocks that we move forward with. They also uh, are a contact person that shares with our five groups about being hope centers. So that means you have to be able to come along the journey, subscribe. If you need a little help, we'll try to help where we give you two tools every month. You study those so you really know the message and you know it from the heart of the Lord. And then we have a second part of those hope uh, ambassadors, those are ones that it's a human development hope ambassador where we see 
not only do we proclaim the principles of hope and how to build your life on hope, how to build your family on hope, how to build others, but we second look at you and we prophetically, and which has been my strength, others to just see who you are, where you're to go, and how you're to get there. We ask you questions and then we pray for you every month. We interview you. It's a coaching. So that's fifty more dollars a month, which is nothing for the effort that we put in. We're not nobody's taking money from this thing. It's just feeding what we need to do to get the equipment in place. And so we're, we need many, many hope messengers. Uh, we'll have hope scholars and teachers in the future, and we'll talk to you about those who want to go on an institute of higher learning about the Hope Reformation. So the things we need as well is hope benefactors. Those are what we run by as people that can give $10 a month, uh, $1,100 a month, their firstborn, or a half gallon of ice cream, just the house, the dog. No, we, we've had, you know, I used to be the uh, chaplain to all the sports teams. We had one of the different athletes give us quite a bit of money. I'm not going to go into it to develop curriculum, and it really, really helped. Jeremy Affel, Gary Spaney, uh, Bobby Bell, Paul Kaufman, other guys like that. We just thank you. And thank you for all those that gave, like Lee's and, and Ann's and, and Sharon's that have given us, Terry, that James, that just really keep us going because you give to a general fund where we're able to do the work we need to do. And, and it's creating curriculum, creating content, the prophetic words. We need somebody who's a scribe. I get them constantly about nations and people groups and find out they're real and get called from leaders in those nations. But it's a lot of work. You need somebody that can be a prophetic scribe. So, but that's a, that's a hope benefactors where you just send in and on our web page, it tells you how our Facebook, we're hoping to get that where you can just donate and it'd be multiplied back to you. It's good fruit. The, the other way I would encourage is the hope product or golden tools that you know, I got a number of them behind me. I'm not going to show you them now, but they they're in an order. We build tools, and we got about seventy that are to build you up block by block. We don't don't shotgun to meet a need out here. We're building you into being a hope adorer, a, a, a pillar of adoration that you're not moved. We're building you to be a different kind of a prophetic person, a hope here that hears on a different level and knows how to build. We're, so these tools uh, will be listing and identifying as we go along. Uh, and that's the primary way. So being a hope volunteer is what I've kind of mentioned is we just need people that have a no chief or ruler like an ant that you can give them uh, our materials and say, hey, could you help edit or can you help post and distribute or can you help us with our visuals like our, uh, our, our editing of our videos? Can you help with some of the content and how it's said? Um, you know, we just need product development. We need web page development. We need financial analysis, you know, just uh, so that we do everything right. So, you know, I just wanted to come on quickly, review the vision, review the different arms of what we're doing, uh, the who, what, where, and when. You can call. We got a, uh, and we'll list this. And we got an administrative email that we watch and observe, and we have a phone number. Now, in the past, with all the changes, it wasn't the most uh, best tool. But now we've landed. We've got some awesome people. 
and it just feels so god good to be secure with Cruz right here Van Cooper with Jimmy with the, I, I could go on Kate when it's awesome so please 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 raise your right hand I will agree with these uh, realities of hope I will agree with being a co-builder because I have an inheritance here and I will be agree to be a hope prayer for Jillian who needs prayer from phlegm blocking their throat and irritating them in Jesus name deliver them now Jacqueline we ask for a sponsor that would help her sponsor us we work in together as a team in Jesus name I want to tell you testimonies I'm writing songs for different nationally known artists about hope and so we're doing all this as a team together okay love you pause